All right, fellas, this is going to be a basic guide on how I'm seeing how you can fluidly level up your intelligence skills. Okay, as you can see, I am using the build that I showcased before about the best build there is. Um, as far as I know, I believe I made a video about it, but if you didn't see that video, 2.5, 2.5, um, basically it gives you about 30 hour time limits to level up some of your basic skills that are going to be the harder things to level up and give you basically the best overall general build that you can have for your character. So in 30 hours, you can get 4.5 strength. 30 hours, you can max out both of these skills in your constitution. 30 hours, I mean, you already have your thievery, but you're going to have higher dexterity. 30 hours, you can max out your camouflage and stuff. But now we're getting into intelligence. So, how do you want to passively level up your skill if you don't want to farm it and just sit there for an hour farming all these skills? Well, the best chance I can think of is to be something in the game that's more fluid that you don't really feel like you're leveling up. And as you can probably guess by this pig on the ground, it has to do with hunting. So, during the night, in a lot of games, people just don't play. Sometimes it's very dark. However, with Scum, I think this is the best time to level up your survival and awareness, engineering, and your cooking skill all at once. And you can get camouflage in there as well. So with how this build is set up, we're going to need 20 to 30 hours to finish leveling up camouflage. And this also means that you can be more of a nomadic hunter at the beginning of the game and not worry about people finding you because of your campfire. Like, they'll see the campfire, but as long as you're doing what I'm saying, um, I don't think they're going to see you. And then by the time they get close enough to your campfire, you can probably pick them off. So how this starts off is basically you need to find and hunt an animal. And my suggestion with this is to find an area that you're familiar with so you don't necessarily need a compass. So whatever area that you know very well in the back of your hand to where you can take directions, that's going to be the best area for you to kind of negate, like figure out where the animal went, okay? The only other suggestions that I could really give since you have no awareness skill and such is to take your time when you start running after something, get used to how far away these clues normally are, and then slow down after you cover some ground. Um, the next one would be probably to stay into open areas or things without a bunch of vegetation on the ground. It's probably best. Um, listen to the audio cues for the hunting. So, um, for me, I took off my surround sound. So, just like a lot of other games, like shooter games uh, that we've played in the past, you can put like that 7.1 surround on your head, but it kind of messes with your location when you're in game so just go back to the standard binary stuff and turn your head when the noise hits to get a direction of where to go that clue is pretty much in that direction now the snow biomes don't tend to make as many animals that I've seen but I do know that generally towards the afternoon the goats and stuff are spawning and then at night the wolves and the boars are spawning um, the other thing with this is that uh, the goats, really, there's only one. But some of these, like the boars, for instance, spawn multiple boars at the same time. So if you're hunting with a group of players, then it might be better just to go and hunt some of these larger pack animals at night. Or like a bear or whatever, you know. So basically what we're doing is we've killed this boar. All right. And we're going to chop it up. Now, what we're really trying to do here is make it to where everything that we do is kind of efficient at the same point. Right? So we've chopped up this boar. We can go ahead and chop up this meat if we want. It's not going to be that big of a deal. And you can see, like, we've been eating a good amount of food, restoring our calories. So our burn rate is kind of low right now, but we have plenty of stuff from the goat that we just killed earlier. So leveling these skills are generally calorie intensive, especially survival skill. Cutting these things, you can see that it takes your calories up to a high level. 400, 500 burn rate. So that's why doing this while you have access to food is pretty nice. Okay? So make sure that you eat while you're doing this. 
so that you can keep up your calories and stuff and all of this. And also, get rid of your exhaustion rate. So this is going to be the main way while you're leveling these at night to also get your exhaustion down. Okay? So we cut up some of the animal. And then basically now you need to go find a tree. And any tree here can do. Drop my axe. Alright. So depending on your survival skill, this is going to affect the tree cutting down speed. But this won't be too bad. And if you draw attention to yourself, that's fine. Um... Basically, the camouflage skill starting out instead of medical is going to help keep you safe while you're doing this at night. Um, the combination of it being dark means that players probably won't be able to see as well. And then on top of that, you're going to have the ability to disappear off the map while you're not moving. So since this tree was a little bit farther away, let's just uh, let's move this stuff over here. Basically, you want to find an area that's next to a bush, and in the snow areas, if you didn't know, these things like this, they're technically bushes, sort of. Okay. Go ahead and spin this, and then we'll drag the boar meat up here. Go ahead and take the torso up. All right. Turn the stick, try to direct where the sticks go. Now, as you can probably guess from me putting everything around a bush, you know what we're going to be doing for camouflage skill, and that's setting in that bush area. So we can level up our camo skill along with everything else. You also want to keep some cloth on you, so while you're collecting items to make uh, like medical gear and things like that, Because we want to level medical early. So one of the main things you want to do starting the game is going to be level up your medical. And so you need a lot of rags for that. Since we, ain't, we aren't going to have like a huge access to alcohol, especially on low loot servers. But cloth, generally you can find cloth all over the place. So now we have this fire. And then you're going to want to go ahead and craft a fire drill using a couple of sticks. And then we'll go ahead and chop up this meat and get the fire going. Alright. Now we're going to go ahead and move the fat over here. And then we'll start the fire. Alright. And now, on the fire, you want to go in here, go to skewers, meat skewers, and then put in your cooking things. And whether or not you eat uh, this meat doesn't matter. I don't feel so well. Alright. And then the next thing we need to do is just start cutting up our wood. So you can cut up your wood before or after, but I go ahead and cut it up after I do the fire so I can stay warm. So the way this build's set up right now, we can level strength, conditioning, endurance, and running all together. And now we can level up survival, awareness, engineering, cooking, and camouflage all together. With similar leveling times for the most part. And then during the day, we want to collect basically rags. You want stashes and stashes of rags. 
Um, because if you have enough rags to do it, and you take like a C2 injury or something, the minimum, like the maximum amount of time it would take just with rags is like 13 hours, and that's without adding in any increases to uh, like the medical XP and stuff. Now, whether or not this meat burns, I just don't think it really matters, to be honest. But I will go ahead and set a timer. And then if you look on here, you can put in what you want to fuel the fire with. And we're going to fuel it with big animal fat. So all of the fat from the animal you're going to use to fuel the fire. Everything else is going to be used for engineering. Now, if you have engineering fully maxed out for the most part, or not fully maxed out, if you have a flag, you can actually get engineering from zero to basic at a faster rate with a single door frame for the most part. But when it comes for leveling it up without a flag currently, you're going to be looking to use this blank sign for the most part. And we're going to use the short sticks, wood planks, and the hatchet. So if you want to do this without having to craft a bunch of stone axes, then basically this DLC character is pretty good for that, to be honest. But he does have the weak spot of coming out with... He has less clothing, so you have to find clothes or you'll freeze to death um, in the snow biome. And you can't just make a bow and everything like that at the beginning you have to find puppets first so the character is a little bit slower and a little bit weaker when he hits the ground but he kind of makes up for it with this metal axe okay and basically, when you get that stuff like that done, then you can go over here and just set in this bush. And you'll see that this bush, even though it's small, is leveling up the camouflage skill. And right now, we're leveling up at like 27 or 28 every 5 seconds or so. Which is going to be about 20 or 30 hours to finish this. We've already gained 1% just over there helping with that goat. So from here, you're going to be able to click F on the fire view your cooked meat or whatever and you can look at our cooking still still at 28 percent and then you can drag your meat over here and just use the actual fat to level up or not level up to uh, fuel the fire now our awareness is at 50 percent our survival is now at you know 43 percent engineering is going to be increased here in a minute and uh, cooking will increase here in a minute as well and I guess if you technically wanted to level your medical badly enough and you didn't want to, like, collect rags, you could make some of that burn ointment and burn yourself here, but I haven't really messed with that yet. So these, it doesn't really seem to matter if you pull these off early. I don't really know if it affects the HP or the XP or anything. But it's not, um... Super crazy, you know? So now we're at 35% cooking skill. So you can already see that we're going to be able to jump up again and again with this. And we have all this excess meat that we can eat later. I forgot that we had this meat in our pockets as well. So during the day, you're going to have more food to actually eat. And all that stuff. Alright. And then our... Energy consumption, I mean, we can still eat more meat if we want. But the next thing is, you go and do the blank sign. And you just simply start filling up blank signs. Now, these signs should be invisible to anyone that is not you or in your squad. And you should be invisible to anyone that's not directly up next to you. So... 
If someone does look over here, they're basically just going to see a campfire. And if they're really crafty, they might see that things are disappearing off the ground, but that just depends. And just make sure to put your animal fat in there. Go ahead and set another timer. Now you'll also see when you get farther away from the bush, you can actually kind of stick out of the bush and still gain camouflage skill. So we're still technically in the bush right here. But there is going to be a limit at some point. So we're still in the bush, technically. Still technically in the bush. Technically in the bush. Technically in the bush. And we're outside the bush. So as long as you have a foot touching the bush. You should be good. So right there is the maximum distance. That I can be out of that bush with my foot touching it. And be in camouflage skill. All right. But that's an extreme case. It just means that if somebody comes over here and tries to like maybe they know the trick, they've seen the video. They're not just going to be able to shoot a shot randomly in the bush and hit you. They might miss because you could be any direction of the bush. And it's probably a radius. Right now, we're not in the bush because my foot isn't touching it anymore. So you just got to be careful about that. But essentially, that's all you're doing. So no longer are you not doing anything during the night because you can do this. And it's going to get rid of your exhaustion because you don't need to be running around. You're going to be doing something proactive. A little bit of fat. But yeah, and that's the gist. And like as soon as you're done with an animal, you just go on another hunt. Find an animal, hunt it, cook it. And then your first base for me would probably be um, just stashing so we're at 35% right now go ahead and take that one off These are all pretty much poorly cooked every time. Now we're at 42%. So there is something that there's a specific time frame that's best to take the food off, but I don't know what it is. But you see they're all leveling up at a pretty consistent rate together. Yeah, engineering's at 30-something. We're, like, we're not even done with engineering yet, so. You basically just do this, and we're going to need to put some more food on the bobby. Eh? And there was two boars that came out of this, so your friends can uh, level up their stuff as well if y'all hunted together. Just gotta separate when you're going for the kill, you know?
But yeah, nighttime hunting is a little bit easier than daytime hunting because you can see the blue on the ground a little bit better. And snow biome hunting has less foliage on the ground so you can actually see the clues a little bit better as well. Um, the only other thing I can really think to tell you is that certain animals seem to have specific distances between their clues. So if you get used to running for a certain period of time and then slowing down beforehand, you can run right into the clue. Um, some of the clues look like branches, so get used to seeing what weird branches look like. And then also... Um, what's the other one there? Slow down your pace. Like, to a walking pace or a jogging pace or something when you think you're close. Because it takes a moment for the things to register. And if you're running by super quickly, it just won't pop up. And you'll waste time. But it seems like the faster you get the clues done, the more time that you have. But if we go back and look at engineering now, it's at 50%. So we literally, we killed two animals. And we did all this. And everything here is basically towards 50%. And then our... Camo skill is slowly going up. So, cooking skill is going to be... And this is just one night. You know? So, I've killed two animals tonight. I could stop. I could wait for another day. Or I can just continue to stay out here and kill more animals and store more food for the daytime. And then my own personal calorie consumption, we're still going up. So all that stuff's pretty good. The only bad thing about the animal meat is because of the extra fat. But our character is burning through stuff enough. Like, this will go down now, but during the day, we mainly just want these energy stores up. And then our exhaustion is still at 14 right now. But it's going to be going back down. Like, the more we eat, the more we rest. You hear that right there? That's another hunt. So, let's grab our axe. And I'll pick up some meat to go. And then we go on a hunt. Now, you will need to practice your archery some because uh, there are some tricky shots with archery when you're hunting. So, with this bow, even this bow right here, I can barely pull it back because my archery skill is terrible. So, I gotta arch my arrow pretty high before I can land a shot. Now, when you're going and you're looking to do um, some hunting without a bow, which I think is actually kind of easier. What you want to do is wait around for your uh, animal or target, basically, to lay down on the ground. That's going to give you time to run up to them before they can get up during that animation. So you're going to get twice as long to hit them. And it's only going to take a couple of hits to actually take them down. And if you have access to third person, this is it. But you hear the sound from over here. So we know it's kind of in this area. And we're not seeing anything major so far. I'm just going to go ahead and check around this rock because it's pretty big. Right there. You see the blue? Now, meat skewer, this is going east, but also you can tell from these paws because they all have the same paws right here. I'm just going to go ahead and look. I don't think that we get any XP for cooking unless we take it off the fire. So I probably should have just went ahead and took it off the fire. Now, this animal, I'm not sure what this is. It might be a moose or something. It's not one that I've hunted yet. Thought I... thought I was seeing a clue. So here, we can hear it in this direction. 
There's a weird visual glitch on my screen when I change views. So even if you don't know your directions, you can kind of follow the noise, but... There it is. Southeast. So the dam's right there, so that's north. South is going to be this way. And then east is going to be where the sun rises, so more this way. You don't have to be exact when it comes to directions. The main thing is to be in the area when the, the vocal goes off. Try to remember where you were going. If you go past it, you'll be fine. But the main thing is to be fluid and not necessarily waste time. We might have went past it. If you're not sure, you can just wait. Sometimes they take a really long time to make noise. Let's go back towards the way that we came. Maybe it'll trigger. I'm thinking if you're in the area, it doesn't trigger as often. So right here, this is the branches that look weird. So now we got east. So, that was north, I believe, so east is probably more this way. During the daytime, if the sun is up in the morning, you'd be able to follow the sun, and if it's in the afternoon, then the sun will be going west. So that's fairly common. But as... So you want to move your head back and forth to kind of geolocate where this thing is. The main thing I had to get used to trying to hunt with this was like on my server settings. When I was hunting, it would always lead me into a big swarm of puppets. And I'd be trying to fight off like eight puppets and try to hunt at the same time. It was terrible. However, I'm not seeing the clue here. We might not be close. Yeah, we're not close enough. So it is right here. And then when this paw prints come, it says east, but also these paw prints, it looks like most of all the animals have the same sort of hoof pattern. So really the big side of the hoof is the front, and it goes that direction. So you don't necessarily have to know exactly where east is. Sometimes their directions aren't very specific either. Like it'll say... It'll say like northeast... But most of the skills in the game are easier to level in the snow. But also the snow is more difficult to survive in. So right here. So east. There it is. See what kind of... I don't know what, I don't know what kind of animal that is. And the game just kicked me out. Sounded like a cow, but might be a moose. So the server just reset. I don't know if that despawns the animal or not, but we're about to learn together, fellas.
So let's see if we can get back in here. Also, something else to note is that some animals, the puppets will chase. So like that boar, for instance, two of them spawned, but a puppet was in the area and chased the uh, boar off, and I had to chase after it. I think my game just crashed. Maybe not. But you see three animals potentially, um, which will give us plenty of food for any journey that we're going to go through in the day. As well as, uh, you know, extra money if we went to go sell it or, um, you know, hides and stuff for crafting if we happen to have thread. I still don't know why they don't have improvised thread in the game. Like you can use fishing line for thread, but you can't use improvised fishing line for thread, I guess, which is just weird. This might be the longest part of the video. Anyway, y'all guys saw basically everything. We just don't know what that animal is, but it's going to be rinse and repeat after that. So hopefully y'all picked up what I'm saying. Y'all can try it out for yourselves. Try out the build because it seems like probably... The best, if not close to the best, build situation in the game. Um, it looks like we just got in. So let's see if that animal's still here real quick. But I'll log off right after here. Y'all can tell me whatever you want in the comments or, uh, you know, message me on here, whatever.